I want to thank the Noble Foundation for this opportunity to speak. They really sold into our life. Um, anyway, um, I'm a fourth generation rancher, and I, I think they put the country boys first. I am one of you, uh, and this is this makes me nervous. I've never operated a clicker, but they said I won't, had to do this. So, but anyway, this is me and my wife Gail. We're located in southeastern Oklahoma. We're about 90 miles right in there, Choctaw County. I have about 2,000 acres that we operate. I caught myself in 1998 after a drought uh, into Kansas looking for hay. And I, and I remember the statement that my dad had told me. He said, there ought to be some way that you can go through raised cattle without uh, going through the hay situation. So I come back and I took my cows to the sale and we've been doing it for four generations and I've always been doing things the same way. And so I thought, well, I want to do something unique. I want to do something different. So uh, I sold my cows and I went to work on my places. And I went to building fences. I went to div uh, dividing my places up. I, I went to putting uh, uh, lanes down through the center of them. Went to using gotcho war and spreading my post out about every 24 foot, put two stays in there. This is some other place down south that you see that I subdivided it. I've also got lanes where I can take these cattle up and into the lots here and load right here on the curve of the road. I'm the sole workforce on these two places. The only time I use anyone is when we pin cattle, I'll bring my wife and my son in, maybe a friend. My corrals are where you can load out anytime, rain or snow. I'm gonna go back to my, my other place. This is my headquarters place. And what I do, I, I haven't owned a cow since 1998. I take in outside cattle. And what I do to, to do that there's some keys, there's some packages that I have to do, and one of them is the infrastructure. You know, when people come out and they look at this place and they see this, my lots are right here and I've got a lane system, and they see uh, I've got scales. Also, I got uh, down this lane system here, I've got water and fresh water on each side of these paddocks. I can, I usually, when I receive the cattle, I put about 75 head per paddock to make sure that they're healthy. And after I get them healthy, I've got, uh, I've got a feeding deal where I can drive in up here and go down this lane and I can feed on each side. I can go down, I've got me overhead that I can fill up here, go across a cattle guard, go to the top of the hill and drive down through here, feed cattle on one side, turn around, come back, feed the cattle on the other side without ever opening a gate. And so this is one of the keys to get the outside cattle. You gotta have some infrastructure, the lanes, fences, uh, live water and uh, even got livestock scales at both places. Both places are really identical. Uh, my corrals, uh, when I first built those corrals, I'd, I'd get up in the middle of the night and I'd say, you know, I, Gail said, where are you going? I said, I, I, I figured out how to put the angles, the right angles, the right width. The lanes that come down through are 32 foot wide. I can, you know, myself on my four wheeler, I can go out and I can, I can head cattle in there. I can also take them down. I can cross those two 16 foot gates. And I can take those cattle, if I've got moving my cattle, and if I'm going down the, down the lane here, and I'm moving them, I call this uh, the north side, N1, and uh, this is north side, N1 through five, and then this is the south side, S1 through five. So I'm taking cattle from, from S1 to S2. As I take them through that gate right there, if there's a sick animal, I'll let 495 come through. And that, that five head that's a little sick or something, I'll just cross the gates. So any way they want to go, if I'm pinning, uh, I can do that all by myself. 98% of the labor is done by me. My place is basically Bermuda Base. We have a spring flush, and this is ryegrass you're seeing here. But anyway, I, these cattle, uh, after I get them straightened out, I'll put them together. And I'll start rotating them through these paddocks. Uh, and usually, uh, I just ride out there on my four-wheeler, and they're there at the gate. They see me coming and they, they know what gate, they know that they're gonna to fix to make this circle and they'll just follow me around. Here's some more cattle I was fixing to make a move there. You can see them sort of moving there toward the gate. And these cattle, I take them in. For the last two years, I've took them in on a per day basis. Uh, I have done it on the gain. I've run for some, uh, for some uh, couple of feed yards. I've uh, run for individual, one individual for 10 years. Here they, I've, I've let them through that paddock uh, in three out of in two. Here's a, a watering tank that I, I have in my, my system. And this is our fences here. Uh, these posts are a little closer together. They're up close to a trap. Here's a, a long trough I've got. This thing's probably 30 foot long where I can wet these with a, 
for fly control, I, I take some just old used oil and put some chemical with it. Those cattle come up there as they get mineral, they'll, they'll uh, get that grease all over them. They'll look plum greasy, but it will uh, give them some, me some fly control. Uh, right down here, I want to show you something. See those little string of blue barrels? There's eight of those uh, half barrels. They're cut long ways, and I've got a chain to them. And a lot of times, I'll just go down with a little four-wheeler, and I'll hook that chain to the ball on my four-wheeler, and I'll just move it, say, from here on down, go through that gate, and those cattle will see me, and they'll drag that. Little, I'll drag that, and so I move my... I can move a string of three of these, which will be 24 halves with just my little four-wheeler, and, uh, and I, my foot feed grounds are moved. And uh, sometimes I get water in them, I can take them and cross my arms like a bulldog and a steer and give them a little flip. They'll all flip over, and I'll flip them back. And uh, so uh, that's, uh, I use those quite a bit. Uh, this is my, my lane systems. That lane that's uh, going this way, that's going across the section line over to another place, and it's got little paddocks on both sides. And I spent a lot of time with the cattle. I just sort of, I had a, a bunch of Charlotte cattle the other day that was pretty rank. And, uh, and anyway, so I just, just got to going out there and just sitting with them. And so now I've got them where they'll come up uh, all around me. Here, here's that lane system where it's at the top of the hill that goes down through here. It goes to the different paddocks. And you see the feed troughs there. And it goes on down. So I can just drive down through there and feed and turn around and come back and feed on the other side. This is some more of my, my lanes. And, uh, you can't see that real good, but I've got a little post, and there's a hog war. When I cross the section lines, I just sort of swing this hog war fence around. I'm fixing to go across, and I've got hog war fences on bo both sides. Or I, ha I use a lot of that uh, orange fencing that goes around construction sites, the little plastic stuff. I'll just uh, take some bungee cards and uh, go across the road and uh, stop the traffic and uh, move uh, sometimes a thousand head of cattle at sometimes 500, just whatever I've got. Here's the hog war again. You can see a little poster. I, that sort of stopped traffic. Uh, but you can see those cattle over on the other side. They're wanting to move. This here is a little invention I come up with. You know, time is money, and it's just I'm doing it all myself. And this is a little, uh, little uh, I call it my cattle guard, my four-wheeler cattle guard. So I can just zip over those things, and I'm in the process of building more of those, where I can just zip on, over them and check my cattle and just go through and, without opening the gate. You know, my dad, he was an old rancher, and, and, a, and anyway, he said, he never gave me a compliment. I always wanted him to, but one time he told me, he said, a lazy man will find an easy way, and so that's the only compliment I've got. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's see here what we got next here. This is an overhead bin. I seen. A, I think they're a sponsor here today, and so I bought these last year. And I bought them just to. When I received these cattle, I realized last year I had a little trouble receiving cattle. And if you can get a little bit of grain in those things for the first week or two, it just seems like it helps so much. And until I get them on ryegrass and get them started, it's, it's really helped out in, with my, my with my operation. Uh, this is one of my scale systems that both sets of lots are identical because they work so good. My wife and my son, uh, we can load out a load of cattle in eight and a half minutes. After that truck pulls up, uh, I've got little gates for the truckers to come through and we can zip those cattle around and we try to get them up close to the, to the lots when we sell. And you know, that's money. And we try to get them on that, those, get them across those scales or get them on that truck and get them out of there and, before they shrink. And so uh, that's just something that, that that saves us time and saves us money and there's uh, from a different view there's my scales and my pins and you know there you see them old cattle are they're laid up there they're contented uh, and they're they're doing good so there's some things that, that I'd just like to talk about some to, to get these cattle in uh, to get a good contract for the with a good producer you've got to have good facilities you've got to have some uh, some good uh, healthy soil and I, I put out a lot of chicken litter uh, and, uh, and you know, and also I stockpile some fescue uh, to receive these cattle. I try, sometimes in the fall, I'll, I'll put, a, put a little nitrogen on, on these fescue pastures and, and, uh, and you can see those seed heads there uh, coming up of that fescue. But, but it is, a, a, that fescue really saves me a lot of feed. I can, uh, and and I, I haven't bailed a bale of hay in, in years and I haven't owned a, a cow in years. So it's, this is a different aspect, but, but you do want to, healthy soil that's that's the key to grow forage and and uh, and, I, and also on equipment I, I try to keep as just a few wheels as I can and basically my little four-wheeler and my, my little Toyota pickup uh, and you know they bring those cattle to me they back up to that trailer 
I mean, to those chutes, and they unload those cattle, and they come get them. And basically, something I do different also is that I, uh, I do t uh, two phases, two sessions of grazing. I take on, uh, in, in the March of 15th, I, I get my, my yearlings in. I call it the spring flush. And, and, and then I go to July 1 and try to get them out of there, but July the 1, it's getting hot. I want to get those yearlings out of there. And then July 1, uh, I, I, sometimes I'll take in different, I'll have a lot, lots of different options. You know, I can take in uh, some yearlings. I can take in some uh, replacement heifers. Uh, I even take some grazing cows because the grass gets tougher after July 1. And so I just sort of divide that up. It's sort of a system that just, just to, that works for me down in southeast Oklahoma. And, and, uh, and then, then after December 1, I'm, uh, I don't have any cattle. From December 1 to March 15th, uh, uh, it's a time that, that I work on my place. Uh, if there's some fences to fix, I, I have an old, older man, 80, I believe he's 87, and he comes in and we, during the winter months, we sort of work on our fences and, and you know, take some time off. And, and I call it, uh, I just tell, I heard this story the other day about uh, two uh, lumberjacks. And there was a, a young lumberjack, an older lumberjack. And the younger lumberjack challenged the older lumberjack to a, to a contest and said, for eight hours, we're gonna see who can cut the most trees. And so, so they, after, after they got started and the young lumberjack, he just went to work. And, and the older lumberjack, he, he started cutting some trees and with, with an ax. And uh, at the end of the day, they, they tallied up and, the, and the, the old lumberjack had won. And the young lumberjack said, well, how did you do that? He said, you know, I, I was cutting and working myself to death and I look over every once in a while and you'd be sitting on a stump. And he said, I was sharpening my ax. And so sometimes that's what I do. After December 1, December 1 to March 15th, I sharpen my ax. I take a little break. I'm not, and I'm not spending 70%. They tell me that 70%, I read somewhere, that 70% of, of owning a beef cow is a winter bill. So I don't have that. I take that money that I'd be spending on grain and uh, cubes and, and uh, hay for that cow. I take that money and I put it in, into chicken litter or whatever I need to do. And you know, I will spend some money, but I, I, want, I, I want to get it in a bag. And, and you know, and I have no money uh, as, as I have a monthly income. I, basically I'm charging a per day fee and, uh, and, uh, and the guy is furnishing the, the feed and he's furnishing the vet supplies. And so uh, that's, that's my problem. I see Ron, I'm, I'm pro 15 minutes we, uh, from Southeast Oklahoma. We, we usually stutter that long, but thank you for your attention. <laughs> All right.